Hey, Racer fans, thanks for joining us another episode of Tough Guys. You know, you hear people say all the time, ah, this guy, I'll do anything it takes to be a race driver. Well, the guy we're going to talk about today, Steve Chassie, lived up to that because Chass was one of those guys whose father owned a sprint car out in California and L.A., used to run Ascot Park, and Steve wanted to be a race driver. But before he could be a race driver, he had to go to Vietnam. Spent two years in the infantry in the front lines of Vietnam, was decorated, came back, started driving a sprint car for his father at Ascot Park, doing a nice job. But Chas didn't want to just be an Ascot, just he didn't want to be an Ascot robot like we used to kind of kid people that only ran Ascot. He wanted to come back to the Midwest and see how good he was. Could he make it in USAC and maybe someday the Indy 500. So in the 70s, him and his lovely wife Gina come back to Indianapolis. Steve starts working 10 hours a day for Grant King building sprint cars and midgets. Chas was a good welder, good fabricator, and that led to some rides. He started doing pretty good in midgets and sprint cars and silver crown cars. Almost won the almost won the championship in 1979 or 80 in USAC. Was really good at Salem and Winchester, the places you had to be brave. And we used to, and he Steve spent a lot of time going down the road with me. He helped me a lot when I was racing midgets. And he would uh, he'd have a ride so he'd go with me in my van and we'd be do, going down the road. And he never talked about Vietnam. I could never get him to talk. One night he finally did. He just opened up a little bit. And he said, you know, people always told me I was really brave. He said, hell, I spent two years in Vietnam on the front lines. He goes, driving a race car isn't nearly, it didn't take any bravery compared to that. So uh, Chas had a reputation as being pretty brave, pretty cocky. We liked him because he always said what was on his mind. Kind of an A.J. Floyd, Bobby Unser throwback. So finally he works his way. He wins the... He wins the Hoosier 100, he wins a bunch of sprint car midget races, and he's getting good rides. So, in 1983, he qualifies for the Indianapolis 500. And that was like, I mean, you know, a lot of guys, that was the pinnacle of their career. And, and for Chas to come all the way here with no money, just his helmet, to make the Indy 500 with hard work, and the fact that he was a good race driver, was pretty cool. He crashed in 84, trying to make it, and then he doesn't make it again until 1987 and in 1988. So he makes the Indy 500 three times. But the last time he made it in 1988 pretty much personified what Steve Chassis was all about. He's driving for a guy named Gary Trout in Cincinnati. Good guy. Doesn't have a lot of money. Old car. Not much of a crew. Chass realizes early on in practice that the guys that are helping are just volunteers that are gung-ho to be part of the Indy 500 but they don't have much experience. So before he goes out to practice he checks all four of the wheels to make sure they're tight, checks the air pressure, uh, just looks at everything and makes sure nothing's going to fall off of it, and he ends up qualifying for the 1988 Indy 500. And it was like, I just think he was his own chief mechanic, and he was and he was the driver. And, uh, you know, Jack McGrath, guys like that in the 50s, that's what they did all the time. But Chas might have been the last guy, that, other than John Martin, that was his own chief mechanic and driver, and he also was one of the last guys from USAC to come to Indianapolis and be hired to drive a race car. Poncho Carter, Rich Vogler, uh, and Chas was probably, you know, the, that was the, those were the last two or three guys that probably got a chance to run Indy based on their ability before road racing and, and kart and USAC split and suddenly being a USAC champion and a USAC winner wasn't enough. So Chas was right on the tail end of that, of, of that era and... Um, Made the Indy 500 three times. Went to work for ESPN as a commentator on on uh, Thursday Night Thunder. And just, you know, Chas was is one of those guys that always tells you what he thinks, whether it's gonna it's gonna offend you or it's gonna it's gonna <laughs> cost him a couple friends. And uh, they got him they got him at ESPN because him and Rich Vogler clashed all the time on the racetrack. And Chas was pretty hard on Rich on, on a few telecasts. And they told Chas, calm it down. There's we're getting petitions, and we don't want you. The people don't want you, you know, picking on Rich Vogler. But and Steve wouldn't stop it, so they they finally got rid of him, which was too bad because he did a really good job. And then, you know, I, I think he went into race car insurance. He worked for Lola. He's done a whole bunch of different jobs, and now he's retired, living in Arizona. But when you talk about guys that were just self-made racers that did every whatever it took to make it, is Steve Chassie would do it, and and to come back here. And to prove himself in USAC, make the Indy 500, 
not very good cars, but certainly his ability and his bravery and his his determination is, is what is what counted. So when you talk about tough guys, I always think about Steve Chassis. I mean, he went from Vietnam to Ascot Park to Salem to the Indy 500. Pretty cool, pretty cool career path, and uh, Chass definitely is one of the tough guys. Thanks for watching. We'll talk to you soon on Racer.com.